Hello viewers, thank you for joining me on the CAP RMF training. If you have not subscribed to my channel, be sure to subscribe as we proceed with today's training. We'll continue with the NIST 853 control family series and today we'll be looking at contingency planning. The goal of contingency planning is to ensure that organizations establish, maintain and effectively implement plans for emergency response, backup operation and post-disaster recovery for organizational information systems to ensure the availability of critical information resources and business continuity for emergency situations. Simply put, contingency plan seeks to ensure that an organization can quickly recover its business operation following a disaster. We'll be looking at some of the controls that falls under the contingency planning control family. I'll be looking at CP2, contingency plan. CP2 seeks to identify the essential mission and business function as well as the procedure for restoring those business mission to full operation following a disaster. It also seeks to identify the maximum tolerable downtime, the recovery time objective and the recovery point objective for the business mission of the organization. It also seeks to identify the contingency plan roles and responsibility and the individuals to contact in the event of a disaster. It also seeks to identify who reviews the contingency plan. How often is the contingency plan reviewed? It also seeks to identify the entities outside of the organization that are involved in the contingency plan process. Now, what are the evidence that we can use to satisfy or to justify that this control is implemented on the information system. We can request for evidence to show that contingency plan is developed, updated and reviewed annually. We can also request for evidence you know, showing that the contingency plan is distributed to key personnel. Now we're moving on to look at CP3 control. CP3 is contingency training. Now, the CP3 control, contingency training, seeks to identify the training that is accomplished, that is accomplished to information system users with assigned roles and responsibilities. It also seeks to identify how do system users with contingency plan roles and responsibility receive the training. Now, what are some of the evidence that we can use to justify or to satisfy that this control, CP3 control, is implemented on the information system? We can request for a copy of the contingency plan training records. A copy of the contingency plan training records. We'll be looking at CP4. CP4 talks about contingency plan testing. Now, CP4 seeks to identify how do you test your contingency plan to determine the effectiveness and the organizational readiness to execute the plan. How often is the plan tested? Who reviews the contingency plan test results? CP4 also seeks to identify how what lessons are learned and the results that are recorded in order to initiate the corrective actions plan. What lessons are learned and the results that are recorded so that a corrective actions plan can be taken. Now we'll be looking at what evidence can we use to justify that CP4 control is implemented on the system. We can request for the most recent copy of the contingency plan test result or contingency plan test exercise. Please note that the controls that I've, that I've spoken of today, that I discussed today, and the evidence that I also discussed today, are, they are subject to increase. You can request for more evidence to satisfy the controls that I discussed today. You can request for more evidence to satisfy CP2, CP3, and CP4 controls.
These are not all the evidence that you can request for. There are more evidence that you can also request for to satisfy the implementation of these controls. I hope this video is helpful. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thank you for watching.